Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday worship here at the Margate Community Church. I know that we are on video right now and we are working very hard to get us back together again in person. The Advisory Council has met and as soon as we have everything in place for safety issues and recording issues, we will let you know when we can be together. And so this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Will you pray with me? Loving Lord, as we join together this morning, turn our hearts toward you and draw us close to you. Whatever our circumstances, awaken our faith to know the power of your peace. Deliver us from any fear, ease our anxieties, and give us strength we need to face our week ahead. Bless us this morning with the assurance of your presence so that wherever we are, we can cling to your promise of hope and life shown to us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please listen and enjoy the beautiful hymn, How Firm a Foundation. favorite hymns. This morning's scripture passage is actually one of my absolute favorites. It's from Isaiah 43, the first seven verses. I will say more about the context of this passage in my sermon, and so listen now for God's word to you. But now, this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear. For I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not come near you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom. Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Don't worry about it. 
how many times have we heard those words or some variant of it? I lived in North Jersey for 20 years, so I heard the New York version. Forget about it. Those four words, don't worry about it, are possibly the most useless words in the English language. They're useless not because banishing worry is bad. Generally, it's a wonderful idea. Most of us worry far too much. But don't worry about it is advice that is routinely given and routinely ignored. The truth is everyone knows what it's like to be afraid. We all have fears. And those fears start very early in life. They start in childhood. Being afraid of the dark. Being afraid that mom or dad won't come back for us. Being afraid of monsters. I remember worrying about my foot being over the edge of the bed in case a monster got it. And fear of bugs. Unfortunately, I still have that fear. But as we get into the teenage years, these fears continue to things like rejection, humiliation, and failure. Adulthood continues the process, of course. It is filled with fears, disease, in this case, COVID-19, certainly, cancer, death, financial situations, failed relationships, crime, storms, failure, aging. Oh my goodness, it's a long list. We all know what it's like to be afraid, and we also know that life can be risky and therefore filled with opportunities for anxieties. There's a lot that can make us feel afraid. Some psychologists, have, however, draw a distinction between acute anxiety and chronic anxiety. An example of acute anxiety might be if you show up to work tomorrow and there's a person that you've been sitting next to for the last three weeks that is now home with the virus. That's called acute anxiety. But if you wake up in the morning with a sense of dread, not knowing how or why you're dreading something, you don't even know what it is, that falls into the category of chronic anxiety. The Latin root for the word anxious, I believe, is angere, and that means to choke or to strangle. Well, certainly, if anxiety gets its bony fingers around your throat, you are going to choke and you'll be gasping for air. Another word that traces this to its Latin root is the word anger. Anger is an interesting word because I think anxious people are often angry people. Because I think anger threatens to choke the life out of our souls. And so, if we allow anger to take part in our life, we are just choking the life out of us. Anxious, anxiety, angina, anger. The ingredients of chronic anxiety plague us in these trying times. We even know what's going on right now. We may imagine ourselves as an anxiety-ridden people, but a quick look at scripture tells us that this has been going on since time immemorial. Speaking God's word to the Israelites in captivity, Isaiah gave wonderful words, reminded us, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One, your Savior. Do you think God spoke those beautiful words because his people were sitting in green, peaceful pastures or beside still waters? No, of course not. That couldn't be further from the truth. What had happened for these people is hard for us to imagine, and this happened all the way back in the fifth century BC. These people had survived a war with the mighty Babylonians. That meant they had already been through a siege of the city of Jerusalem, then a battle that killed thousands. After that, there was pillaging and more murders, and the Babylonians took every stone down, took the walls down, 
and dismantled the whole beautiful synagogue, the big temple in Jerusalem. And after that, all the people who were left were uprooted and marched hundreds of miles to the capital of Babylonia. What happened to those exiles is very hard for us to wrap our minds around. It's so far removed from our 21st century experience. Murder and death, certainly bad enough, but I'm talking about the exile here. Now we're a mobile society. I know of a lot of people who have packed up and moved across the country for a job or family responsibilities. It's not out of the realm of our possibilities, but we can normally get back to home in a little while. Well, not only were those poor people uprooted and marched elsewhere, we have to remember that their entire identity as Jewish people was rooted in their theological understanding of being in the Promised Land. That Temple Mount in Jerusalem was precious to them. They believed that God resided in the Holy of Holies in the center of the temple. And then all of a sudden, they're snatched away from it. They're exiles, and they are racked with worry. Not only are they in a strange country where they don't know the language, but they also worry if they can possibly still be God's chosen people in a different land. How could they worship God without their cherished temple? Their cry of despair is heard in Psalm 137. They said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Actually, they weren't very concerned about singing a song. They were worried that God would not be able to hear their prayers. But Isaiah is the one that God sends to reassure them. He says, I have redeemed you. This is God's message. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. God heard their cries. And of course, this is the message that all of us need to hear today. We're obviously not the first generation of Americans who have gone through some tough times. We know that in the last century alone, there was the Spanish flu, World War I, the Depression, World War II, civil unrest during the Vietnam War, People worry, they feel fear. Sometimes people can worry and it's a good thing because that helps us fend off a real threat. But more often than not, fear is simply a burden. And today's scripture passage reminds us that we do not need to fear. We can live without anxiety. God created us, God formed us, God knows us better than we know ourselves. And moreover, the text says God has redeemed us, God calls us by name, and God says, you are mine. I think we all need to hear this indictment, and this is for all of us, me included. Worry is a lack of trust. If we truly believe that God says, you are mine, how can we be anxious about everything that crosses our paths? This doesn't mean that there won't be waters to go through and fires to go out and pandemics to get through and survive. But all of this anxiety does not honor the God who created us, who calls us by name and not only says you are mine, but you are precious to me. Even Jesus questioned the good of anxiety in the Sermon on the Mount. He asked everyone that was listening, can anxiety and fear and worry add one inch to your height or one minute to your life? No, of course not. Anxiety can actually take away from our height because of our slumped shoulders, and it can shorten our life because of our raised blood pressure. So how do we remember all of these things when life feels so out of control? Well, I'm going to tell you again, the best advice I've ever heard. I think I said this about a month and a half ago, but it bears repeating. 
Whoever said this, actually, is a genius in my book. There's two days every week that you do not need to worry about. Yesterday and tomorrow. Yesterday is gone forever. It is past beyond our control. And tomorrow is also beyond our immediate control. And so that leaves only today. Most people can fight the battle of just one day. It's when you and I add the burden of those awful entities yesterday and tomorrow that we break down. I'm not sure who wrote this. I do know that it is in the AA manual and it says this, this quote, let us therefore live but one day at a time. And in that one day, God promises to be with us. Paul questioned, is God, if God is for us, who could be against us? And later in the New Testament, Peter asked, or rather said, this is great advice, cast all your care on God because God cares for you. That's 1 Peter 5. Yes, there are worries in life. And yes, we are tempted to look outside ourselves for some remedies for those worries. But there is only one who has the power to take away the worry and the anxiety, and that is God. God touches us and holds us with continual loving care. I'll close with one last short quote. Unbelief puts circumstances between us and God, but faith puts God between us and our circumstances. Don't let unbelief put anything between you and God. When we keep God between us and circumstances, then I think we can kick the worry habit. Will you pray with me? Eternal God, you are the hope and strength of every soul. Be with us now as we worship you. Take us to that sheltering rock and be our high tower that frees us from all fear. Loving and holy God, we come before you thanking you for all your kindness to us. We come to you as we are, some of us exultant, some of us feeling broken, some of us feeling the sorrow of regret, some of us in grief, some of us lonely, some joyful and full of hope. In whatever state we are, we thirst for you, O God. Satisfy us with the living water of your Son, our Savior. As your beloved children, we pray for the needs of our world, for a cure for this COVID virus, for love and understanding between all your children, for an end to strife and discord, for peace on the planet, for your spirit of peace. We pray for our church. Though we are apart, we are bound together by your Holy Spirit. We pray for individual needs, O oh God. You are aware of them before we even ask. And this morning, we remember before you Evelyn and Sloan and our first responders and our medical workers who can remain on the front lines. Grant each of us your power, strength, healing touch, and comforting arms. Lord, come with us into this day and into this week. Take our hands and walk us through whatever path we take. Cast out fear and make us wholly your children, called to serve others in your name. And now, Lord, take these words, as faulty as they may be, and transform them through the power of the Holy Spirit, that they may serve your purposes among all your children. We ask this in the powerful name of Jesus, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We know that the world we go into is full of danger, but God says, do not be afraid, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now go with boldness and go with love and peace in your hearts. God bless all of you. I hope to see you Wednesday. Have a wonderful day. God be with you too.